All right. <clears throat> See about uh, getting everything going here. Say howdy in the chat if you're uh, here. Do, do, do. Let's see about doing that. Hello, everybody. It's Damon. Says we got a couple people, maybe. Chris Stevens says hello. Wonder what kind of delay we got. Trying to watch in my video feed here. Got a big DB drive green amp. It's probably been soldered together from the bottom. Otherwise, you could split these two boards, but it's burnt. It's got. Crispy burnt wires, all kinds of stuff. Let's let's switch to let's get this off here. Yeah. So you can see it burnt up. This wire was down in here and it was just fried. There's just all kinds of burn here. It's burned up so bad right here that I cleaned a little of it off. And is just Burnt up there, burnt up there. So the power supply is in really, really bad shape. I don't know about the output section, but we're going to get to uh, seeing. Hey, David, how are you today? Oh, let's pop these clips all off, and then we're going to have to wrestle this board out. I'm worried that underneath some here, especially like where that is burnt all the conformal coating off, that we're going to have... Uh, damage on the underside real bad I don't know we'll see may not be worth fixing might be just a whole lot of cleanup I sure like to put a bunch of goo on that this amp I believe has been repaired before by the amp medics or amp lab or somebody I'm not sure I can't remember what what the guy said uh, I fixed another one of these um, he's got vibration damage on them, and he's got a couple more. And I've warned him that he, we probably ought to get to them and check them. Because uh, otherwise, he's going to end up with a couple more that are dead, and we can go through and we can fix it and prevent that. So. Very good, David. I'm trying to get these big amps done and get everybody's amps that's not mine. This is a local competitor. Uh, you can see where it's, when it got so hot, it baked the finish off this clip, and now it's rusted. When these clips get overheated like that, sometimes they break. You have to really watch the overheated ones because they'll lose their spring. And we may have to replace them. And of course you can't buy those clips. So you have to take them from other dead salvage amps. Oh my goodness. So all I use to take these out. Some people make a little tool. I just cut off a Allen wrench. I got a couple of them. Uh, but it fits into the slot right there. And it, then it catches on the bottom and allows you to lever that up and pop it out of the groove. Ooh. So, we've got a question. I can put stream chat up there. Does everybody like that better? Or, or what? I know that on the replays, it'll allow you to see the stream chat. Do you like seeing the stream chat while the, the video's going? Or do you not care because you can see it yourself? Uh, I do know that if you watch in full screen... You can't see the chat, uh, so some people might like the chat up there in the window so they can see it while they watch it full screen. I don't know how people watch YouTube videos. Me, I always watch them when I'm going to sleep. Uh, that's I'll put on somebody I want to support's video and 
uh, set my sleep timer on the TV and watch the video and it may take a couple nights for me to make it all the way through the video with to actually you know get it all kind of watched between falling asleep depending on how long it is I think get some a few ads and stuff because you got to support the, the people that make content that you enjoy so there's a bunch of good YouTubers that do this stuff for a living. I don't do it for a living. You're watching on the TV. Chat on. Oh, you use the chat on the cell phone. There you go. That's a good idea. Yeah, I really enjoyed having that cheapo smart TV that we put in the bedroom. It's allowed me to put a bunch of different videos on. <clears throat> some nights it's not good some nights it'll be really interesting and it keeps me up uh, but other nights it's you kind of want to listen to it as you're drifting off and maybe you'll hear something that's in that's good or informative and so you you pay more attention or you go back you remember to go back and watch that segment again like I said at least I'm giving them some views and maybe some ad revenue Okay, that is all the clips. We're going to put them in the bag. That's going to be a nasty mess because all the gooey thermal compounds. So we'll probably use another bag for some other stuff maybe. I don't know. They had so much thermal compound it squeezed out from the holes and got all over the clips when they installed them. Somebody went a little overboard with the thermal compound. Which is not a good thing, actually. It's not there to be this miraculous stuff to somehow make your amp cooler. It's there to fill the microscopic voids uh, so that you get a like a hundred percent con surface contact instead. So uh, let's see if I can. Sorry, I gotta, I'm trying to keep my bench clean of a thermal compound because if it gets all over the top side of the amp, then I gotta clean the amp a ton. I don't want to do that. Okay, so we got some screws at the end. And I know you guys are not going to be able to see all this. I don't know how much. Well, I can't go much wider. Uh, so I'll have to slide it down as best I can. This thing takes up all my bench. Uh, <laughs> but I thought I'd at least tear it down. Somebody might want to see an exploded one on the inside. screws out I don't know if it was vibration damage per se that took this out I know this guy is running was running four of these with two strapped uh, I don't know I'm gonna have to seem to have ground wire on the end no it does not can't remember from the other one. I've worked on too many different things. Uh, not sure. I'm gonna have to take that end off so I can run these screws in here real quick. Just in case I do. I'd like to leave that end attached, maybe. Mm. I can already tell you. Kind of need to. Uh, Oh, Jesse, I'm not taking in amps from from other people. I do stuff on the side for fun, and it's all local. And I have way I, I refuse tons of stuff local. Um, it just I don't have time. I, I have a full time job, and 
I could have your amp for over a year before I even touch it because it's just when I get spare time and if we're looking for a house uh, which that's been going terrible because the market's crazy but uh, then we then I you know I'd end up moving uh, that's what happened here the last time we, we moved and stuff um, shoot I I lost six months worth of doing any of this kind of stuff because uh, we were busy fixing up a, one house to move into and then the other house to sell so yeah this thing's pretty big so I mean like you know here's my hand and I got a pretty good size hand not huge or nothing but there's just the caps and so uh, give me oh here we go take measure it is 32 and a half inches long so, so yeah it's big uh, cannot get it all in my screen I'd have to completely redo my camera setup uh, it'll be a it'll be a real fun to pull out of the board here or pull out of the case here in a second uh, get the last of these screws out that's why they, whoever did the repair last time on the other one anyway, they had soldered these two boards together from the back side, and you couldn't take it apart. Uh, which, you know, makes it more reliable on that connection setup, but makes it really hard. There's the uh, end plates, the Platinum Series PT7.5KH from DB Drive. Put these screws up so I don't lose them. But yeah, she's a big, big Korean seven and a half K. And I don't know, I can't remember what it's if it's just rated for two ohm or one ohm. But he had them strapped, so I'm pretty sure he's running two ohm. Can you imagine two of these monsters strapped together? Ooh, that'd be crazy. So I got a bunch of different things. Like I said, I can go overhead and get rid of some stuff and everything. Um, so what I'm going to do now is grab a pair of pliers, or actually maybe my green ones, uh, and try to pop these things free. Sometimes you can do it with pliers. Sometimes you can do it with a pick this but you got to get them tilted in a little bit so that you can slide these things out but you don't want to damage the uh, insulating material if there's some there let me take this out and also you want to feel oh, it's stuck stuck good so there we go I'm try to be super careful I want to feel if one of the FETs feels loose, then you may have vibration damage. We'll have to inspect it for this but anyway, because I know the other one had it. I had to desolder every FET, every rectifier in that other one, inspect every leg, and uh, I had to replace uh, some. So that means I had to redo the batches. So, like, you know, there, there's groups. There's, I think it's a three and three, three and three, three and three, three and three. And you guys can't see that. Oh, you can see it over here. So, three and three. So, like, if this one's leg was broke and that one's leg was broke, well, if they're all the same batches, I can take that group of three that's on the low side or whatever that's all matched up. If their dates all match, I can use that to replace some, but I had to get three matching ones to be... Uh, back in here so that they shared the load equally <clears throat> and the older the amp is the more important that is uh, just because manufacturing got a little better uh, to the point I've seen some of the cheap brands uh, they've stopped bat batch matching uh, now the manufacturer obviously can have much more sophisticated uh, testing equipment and could probably determine whether or not the turn-ons and the resistance of FETs from different batches match where I can't do that but micro major pair hey howdy howdy uh, I've seen you on 
uh, 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 Todd Stream, uh, Ellenberg Amplifier Repair, and that's cool. Uh, uh, well, this amp, this amp is like my Wolfram. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a massive amp. Is the protect light on when you hook it up, or is it no? Um, we got. Uh, uh, you don't even have to worry about the protect light. If I can hold this sucker. It melted through not only the wire, but you can see the blown fets there. And oh, zoom back out here. Try to stay zoomed in. You can see all the black carbony that's here, here, and then it, it even baked the conformal coating off the board and everything. So this whole area is just a mess. When we get it out, I'll have a little bit easier to move because I won't have the weight of the heat sink here. Uh, and we can try to show the, the damage a little better, but let me continue to work to get this tore apart. I thought about tearing it apart before even starting the stream, and I thought, well, that's silly. I can use the time. Now I'm tearing it apart real quick for everybody to hop on and ask some questions and chat. So, uh, you see it. Yeah, it is toasty. Uh, so, see if I can get these output fits to come off a little bit. I'm not wanting to. I have a little bit thin slip tool. Wonder is this stuck down good? Oh, there we go. These are going to be a bear, I can see already. Oh, there we go. Pop it free. That one feels, well, they got tears. I'm worried that these got vibration damage, and I'm going to have to take every, even if the fets are good, I'll have to take them all out. That's what happened on the last one. Um, I could see cracks on the rectifiers and on the, the FET legs and stuff, and that's why I had to go through and make sure. Ah, if I can grab a FET, I'll explain it. Um, let's find a full-size big FET, maybe. That's a little easier to talk about. Uh, let me grab one. Here's one that I've salvaged out of another amp that ended up getting scrapped. Uh, and this is a actually a transistor, uh, but it's the same as all these big FETs. So when they're down in the board, uh, you know, they go through the board and so the part of the leg is sticking out. Uh, the vibration damage will break the solder out from around these and they can lose their contact. But it can also break these legs. So what you have to do when you get vibration damage is you have to desolder every one of them Get them out like this nice and clean get your eye loop and inspect all those legs and even use a little pair of pliers to make sure that there's not a stress spot in them uh, because when i took some of them out you know they came out like this with one long leg and two legs that were you know broke off in in the board still uh, and the vibration damage is just, just got them and so i was lucky on it the output i just had to fix it up a tiny bit uh, and then I had a several in. It had blown the power supply, but uh, it looked to be that it just did part of it uh, because of vibration damage. Uh, the bad thing about vibration damage, how it can really easily kill your amp. Yeah, your amp will keep working as long as it's making connections and stuff. But the scary part is when it loses connection on a gate 
uh, leg. And what on a MOSFET, uh, the static charge just from the from power being on the rest of the FET can build up and turn the gate on and turn that FET on. Well, these FETs need to turn on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off to build uh, power through the transformers to get rectified to make your rail voltage. If this one stays on and the other half turn on, that makes a direct short and then blown up stuff like this happens. And so that's a real bad thing about losing the, the gate leg. That's also why they tell you never to have FETs installed if you don't have a way to tie the uh, the, the gates down. And, and so you'll see pull down resistors like on all these output FETs and a lot of times on power supply FETs that help make sure that uh, besides being the uh, uh, besides the gate resistor, uh, which is when you send the signal to turn it on, but it'll have a high value pull down resistor that keeps that gate leg shut off so it can't accidentally come on. Uh, and But some amps don't have that, and so those are the ones that are really scary for vibration damage because all it takes is a moment for contact to be lost, and then that FET turns on and stays on and doesn't shut off when it's supposed to. And then that, and when the other FET that it's, uh, you know, it's sister FET that should turn on on for the other half of the wave. Oh, there we go. Turns on, it makes a direct short, and then things blow up. And it's, you know, everybody tells you, uh, you know, don't mount your amps to the speaker box. Well, that's true. Um, don't mount cheap amps, to, especially that don't have proper support and stuff to a flimsy speak subwoofer box. But because uh, that you, you will get vibration damage. And I've got on my channel like a little Kenwood that was vibration damaged all the heck. And that's all it took to fix it. Um, it hadn't blown. It just the circuitry that came apart stopped it from working uh, so uh, but in competition vehicles the, my whole point in trying to get there uh, kind of hard to avoid vibration damage you guys are you know 160 db the whole vehicle's vibrating apart i mean these guys are constantly posting pictures of of their rig falling apart because it just vibrates the car to pieces. So a lot of them don't use nice cars. They they specifically buy a vehicle to knowing that it's going to slowly get it all tore up. Okay, so that's one side. <laughs> one side broke free. Oh, and I missed a clip. Why didn't somebody point that out to me in the chat? I missed a clip right here. Oh, I know why I missed that one. I was going to get out. The beating stick. It, uh, this clip was installed a little sideways. Get the light. It's either that or it melted, and I'm having trouble getting my, my tool in. It doesn't want to get in there. So, uh, this is what I use to install them with. It's just a piece of nylon that was a last bit of a part that was in the throwaway bin at work and so I cut it down and stuff and it was too short to, for them to make anything out of and so I just made a punch I'll try to slide that down a little may have just made it worse or may have made it better yes I can get in there there we go got it off there put that in the bag So anyway, this amp, it's got six power supplies. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And each bank has one, two, three. So there's six FETs for this one, three and three. And then, then three and three, three and three, three and three, three and three, three and three. And uh, the easiest way to describe the three is push-pull. So 
uh, the way the windings are, they're center tapped, so you pull one side and then the other. And what you're doing is making AC, you're using a pulse width modulation chip on this board to make AC with the DC power by turning it one way or the other. And then because you have more turns on the output side, uh, it steps the voltage up. And then the rectifiers here, they're just diodes. They rectify that AC back into DC. These caps smooth it uh, and make you give you high voltage rails. And because you've center tapped it, uh, most amplifiers, not all, uh, will then have a positive and a negative rail because uh, you're rectifying half of it as positive, half of it as negative. With the center tap as a reference, ground reference point, and that allows you to make your AC sine waves. Switching power supply is all this is. Super important. If you're going to learn anything electronics, and I've said it before in my videos, learn switching power supplies. They're, they're what powers everything. Uh, electronic nowadays. Yeah. Sorry, my big fat head's in the way. So, what kind of views do we want to see in the live stream? I've got several things, like I said, kind of set up. I've got stuff with Chad on there. I've got stuff with pictures of my big fat ugly head. Uh, of course, I've got stuff to, if we was to be using the scope and the, the uh, power supply, we'd be, uh, we can have that in there. But I don't know what everybody prefers for a format. If I'm online, like watching Sam Bear Vids, uh, I always, whoa, that fet's just coming apart, dude. Is where all this massive damage is. Oh, there, well, there it fell apart. There you go. There's a nice toasty fit. I'll bet. Yeah, top of it just came off. We want to see the inside of a fit. Let's see if we can wipe this off a little. It's kind of oop, melted and toasty, but. That is it, my friends. Some of the fat material is all nice and melted. She uh, she ate that one up good. And the next one is falling apart the same way. Oh, and sounds a little crunchy in the board there. Let's hope it didn't wreck the board too bad. Yeah, like I said, it blew. It really blew over here. So we'll, we'll see. It may... Uh, you know, these are older Korean style. Uh, a lot of people are using the new full bridge stuff. And so some of the competitors, uh, you know, they got to they gotta figure whether or not they want to spend the money to repair this one or if it's time to invest money in a different amp. Uh, technology moves forward. I don't even know if... I think he, I think the guy that, that owns this said he'd considered running some tar amps or something like that. So it all depends on how big you want to get. But I know he, the, the guy that does this, he's he's loud. He's going to go. Uh, uh, I don't know if he's going to nationals or what. Like I said, he runs four of these suckers. He's been running two for a while since these have been dead. And I got one fixed for him, so he's got a backup to the two he's got. I'm worried about his other two amps uh, going pal, but he may not be. I don't know. Oh, but I'm just going to get this one all apart to see if it's even worth doing. He may, he may decide he does not want to spend the money, and I would not blame him if he's got other options. I don't know how old these amps are. I'm fighting my way through the last of these. Uh, trying to get it off of that. 
not tearing this stuff up too bad. Sometimes it's unavoidable. And it just gets tore up no matter what. And you just have to put new on it. And that just adds to the cost of the repair. I normally put that in my leeway of the quote that just says, you might have to spend an extra X amount of dollars, depending on how big it is, uh, for new backing pads if they are so stuck that they're destroyed or in cases where it's all burnt up it may have burnt through these really bad may have, may have wrecked it so that you can't do anything with it I think I've got everything free so that should mean we need to look for screws in the center of the board and get them out like I said I'm just about 100% certain that's going to be soldered together where we could normally split the board into the output section and the power supply section, which would actually make it easier. Um, if you watch Sam uh, Bear Vids, if you watch some of his old videos, he did a bunch of uh, amps. I think he, he was over in Australia when he did a bunch like this. Uh, and so he had them split so he would get a working power supply and he actually used, I think, a working power supply to, to fix a bunch of the output sections and get them going while he was waiting on some parts to fix the rest of the power supplies or something like that. Either that or vice versa. One of the, one, you know, did, did a bunch of that so he could get, quickly get a bunch of uh, things done and fixed, uh, which is great on this style amp. If you're, if where you happen to be, a lot of people use this and you're repairing them and stuff. Uh, um, if you, you know, if that connection, if you make sure it stays good and stuff, uh, technically you could, I'm going to have to get the snips here. You could have, you know, spare whole amplifiers that were power supplies and output sections just sitting on your shelf. If you were a big time competitor, I guess. And when you blew one, you could just swap out that half of the board. That might have it. Mm. I'm worried that this thing's not going to want to slide because it's going to be all boogered up yeah. really, really bad. Uh, but the sun just peeked out. Got that screw. I got that screw. That one. There's a one right there. Nope. That one. Part of the problem with soldering that together is sometimes that makes the board a little uneven and really wedges it in. All right. Let's put these screws away and clean up the workbench to give me a tiny bit of room. Get the tools out of the way here. Let's see if we can get this to come apart. Moment of truth here shortly. It's always funny to see the facial expressions and reactions. So I, can, I can do that. Uh, oh, that's that one. Um, oh, this one. Ah. So, uh, there ain't much to see on mine. I'm just a ugly bald dude. Something about ant repair guys and, and being follically challenged on their head. <sighs> All right. Yeah, uh, you're right. Um, right now there is a whole bunch of parts out there that are stuck out in storage, I'm sure. Um, give this thing some wiggles. I can already see that some of the drive uh, stuff, well, maybe that was the old stick down. I don't know. My, my favorite on these boards is the ones that actually will uh, let the preamp section also separate, uh, but this one doesn't. So I don't know. Oh, there it went. It broke free. Looks like we're going to get a little more of that 
broke free. It's sticky in a couple places. Get a pair of tweezers. Yeah, let's see if we can get this to come off there. It may be so messed up that it'll just never come out, right? Or they may have had it all wadded up and screwed up. I don't know. It looks like they didn't have that lined up well. This side, Daryl. Like I said, I can't remember who he said rebuilt them the last time, but they had been repaired in the past. I think, I think he got maybe a couple of them from them. Maybe they were just extras they had. I don't know. I, too much has went on since our conversation for me to remember accurately, so don't quote me on nothing. But I do know he was running four of these, which is a lot of power. All right, it's got that one straightened out. Let's see if it'll come a little more. Oh my goodness. This thing is wedged in there. I may have to get the jaws of life. I may have to pull all this back out. I may not want to come out. First time seeing a dual board. Yeah, like I said, these screws, can you see them in the shot? Yeah, these screws, uh, normally you would come out and then these boards would separate and the last one was soldered together from the back side. Uh, so I'm not even gonna attempt this, I'm gonna get it out. And then if we happen to see that it's still separate, then we'll take it apart, which would make it great. Cause then if this is all good, I can at least work on something that we can get completely, maybe underneath the, uh, the scope there. Gosh, this thing's really in there. <clears throat> Sometimes going a little backwards helps. We'll see about just trying to get these all out of here. I don't think any of this is helping me. This is the little silicone pad they put in behind there. And see if I can get the glare up. Maybe if I turn this overhead light off. I kind of redid my overhead light with a different color. Oh, that helped. Sort of. My, my fluorescence in the garage really do it. That you can see that's where the thermal is. Anyway, the, this one came out really nice. Let's see if we can get the other one. It's got a couple little nicks in it, I can see. And if they if they end up bad, you just have to replace them. But they are covered in thermal compound like crazy. They they sure did, sure did not spare the thermal compound on this. So anyway, yeah, on that, I, I kind of don't know if I finished the, do I repair amps? Where can I send it in? Sorry. I know there's a lot of people out there desperate to get their amps repaired and there's very few places. Uh, and all the places are probably telling you it'll be months. Some of them are telling you it'll be next year because parts just are not available. Uh, that's part of why I am not taking in much of any work right now. I really scrutinize what I'm looking at to make sure that I either already have the parts or that they are available. That one's all tore up. We're definitely going to have to replace that one. Uh, let's see if that helps it slide a little now that we're... Yeah. Well, I 
get it about that far and then it wants to hang up on something. So let's take the, uh, the screws out of this end clips here and see if it'll go that way. I just want to go the path of least resistance. I don't want to tear nothing up. I don't want to this big. That's the thing. So, uh, and the Fosgate flag background is pretty sweet. I have a similar one on Marketplace for $20. Well, I think that's where I got this one. So, yeah. It's kind of fun. It makes for nice uh, background. It allows my... Uh, Allows me to put a little blocker where, where the door is in case the family needs to come out and grab stuff because, you know, they don't necessarily choose to be on YouTube. So it affords them a little privacy or they can at least poke their head out and I'll peek and if they need something I can always mute the mic and uh, respect other people's privacy and choices. I don't want to force anybody to be on my YouTube. I'm doing this for fun. I, you know, other people do it for a living. So, All right, going that way. Aha! That's right. There is ground screws with straps, and I think there's one on each end. Oh, you guys can't see that. Let's see if I can screw. And I think there's one on each end. Now that I'm remembering, so I gotta take this off. Chassis wire off. Out. Oh, oh. oh no, there's not one on the other end. So it was just that one. Okay, let me get these screws out of the way, carefully, give me a little thing to put this so that's not making a mess, clean my hands, Okay, da, 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 da. I seen that you were streaming uh, that D A R R H F D R H. I want to chime in and tell you I still haven't removed that input board for the Punch 150 to mail to you, but I haven't forgot. Oh, that's okay, dude. Yeah, I actually got a bunch of them from uh, Desert Audio Specialists. I sell my board to them, and they repair the Punch HD amps for the people that don't want to do it themselves. Uh, they're one of Rockford's certified, you know, that actually Rockford endorses. Uh, the other two are uh, Freeman's in uh, South Car Carolina. Freeman's has their own boards. So this is the board that Freeman has because I got one of them. I got one of the last ones uh, that he would sell to the public because they're almost out. Uh, their stock of the ones they had made. Uh, is almost gone, and so uh, Jason there knows I have the uh, uh, these uh, other boards made, so he's like, well, as soon as he runs out of stock, he's just going to switch to mine, I guess. Uh, well, he'll make a business decision is what he'll do. He'll decide whether he wants to make more or he'll buy mine, one of the two. Uh, I won't say he's going to buy mine because I'm not him and I ain't forcing him to do nothing, but, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, Desert Audio buys mine, GNS buys them, uh, the Amp Doctor over in the UK buys my boards, and uh, <clears throat> so anyway, they sent me a bunch to see if I could salvage a few, uh, and there's maybe like, he sent me like a pile of like 20 of them, and I think there's maybe three that might be salvageable out of it, and so... Okay. It's still tight as all blazes. So one of the amps I worked on the other day had a, 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 back, a, a chassis strap 
uh, for, for grounding to the chassis on each side. And so you had to slide the board one way, take it out, and then you had to slide the board the other way and take it out and then get it out. So I'm about to, uh, really I need to set this on my big barrel, which is over here with my trash barrel. Uh, uh, that would give me enough room to walk backwards because otherwise I'm hitting stuff here on my bench. So you're going to have to bear with me. I know you want to see this thing come out, but actually I think I'm going to carefully move it. Oh. And slide it out over here. foot long board mm. is officially out and this whole side over here had melted into that uh, stuff and that's why this is all tore up and all that so leading me to believe possibly considering there's metal solder flake over here that's come off of something that this side may be burnt um the other thing, if I can hold it real careful, either previously in its life, it definitely blew up the outputs over here because you can see that spot. Here's the current spots and here from the power supply from this time. Ugh. So when you take these things apart, sometimes that can give you clues of what blew up. Uh, I'm going to see if I can turn my overhead light back on and it not be too glare. I changed the bulb in this up here from a, a white LED to a uh, soft white, and it seemed to help in my recordings a little bit. But I think I need to put a piece of parchment paper back over it to diffuse it just a little more. I'm not a professional, so... <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and carefully. Oh, there's parts of more fets falling out that are blown up. So we want to look at the bottom of this board. So yes, they did solder this together. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. Let's let's just go to the full overhead view. So you can see here, find something to be a good pointer. Uh, you can see here where they've soldered uh, this plate together right here. There, there, there's a line. This is the seam where the two boards go. So these are the small pin connectors, small pin connectors, small pin connectors. Uh, and then they got these big bolt plates for the, for the rail voltages to go across. Uh, and so they have soldered that together to make that connection more reliable, uh, which I don't blame them. It, it, it is definitely a point that those these boards could be unreliable, uh, especially on a competition vehicle with lots of vibration. Um, however, it makes it really hard to work on these because you either need to desolder it so you can pull it apart, which is a real pain once somebody soldered it, or you just have to work on it as a big old board. Um, now, I do have some sticks that I will... Uh, grab here in a minute if I can find them anyway I got some long wood uh, little one by twos kind of you know just the cheap chintzy one by twos I'll lay them on here and I'll kind of clamp the board to it to help me flip it and stuff so it doesn't flex quite as much oh and you guys can't hardly see because I've got you zoomed in uh, helps me with wrestling the board uh, to keep the board from flexing so much and, and, and doing potential damage so I have here where I can see it got that board extra crispy. That's the really burnt up spot. Um, over here a little bit. I really need my glasses. Uh, so this may need some extensive work because it looks like it's carbonized it. So let's see if I can gently walk this to where I can center it and use my 
pad to help it slide here. Let's zoom in. Yeah, right there at the top of your screen. I'm going to walk this thing a little bit more so you can see that where this is a FET, one, two, three, and this is the next FET, and the next FET, this stuff is charcoal and it's wavy. This, this whole part of the board is wavy. And so there are some guys out there, repair guys, that will fix an insane amount of board damage. And this is just going down in, in layers. Uh, I'm not one of them. I'll fix some on some old stuff. I know uh, uh, one guy, Jason, he does it on Phoenix Gold. He's actually made uh, partial circuit boards to replace known places that get ate up and blown out in old uh, rare Phoenix Gold amps uh, that are valuable to collectors. <laughs> However, the problem being is, is that these aren't collectible <laughs> or, or rare or old school or anything like that. So the, the, uh, the amount of work to fix something like this needs to be balanced with what it costs to buy either new or used. You always have to deal with used because this you couldn't buy again new. Um, they know, I don't think they don't no longer offer this exact model. So then you would say, well, is there somebody that's got a working used one? And if so, how much is it? Let's say this amp was, I don't know. I don't know how much it was brand new, but let's just say $2,000. And let's say used, they sell for a thousand. We're going to use the easy math. Uh, Mark Candy, NS2. No, this is a uh, DB drive, which uh, the NS2... I'd have to pull it up, but it may be about the same size. Uh, and if it's Korean design, then it's going to look really close to it. Uh, but we got a lot of damage here, and this board is carbonized. Uh, so that's going to have to all be repaired, dug out. Uh, but you can see how much damage there was there. Um, got a little over here. Does not look to be too bad. Some of that's just... Uh, Flux, old flux. So this doesn't look too bad. I'm looking with my glasses here and I may have to get my light here. <clears throat> but basically what I'm trying to do is determine, and then I'll, I'll talk to the guy that owns it, uh, whether or not he wants to put the time and money in it. Because uh, he might be able to grab one used one since we got the other one repaired and grab his other two amps and make sure that they're not going to pop on him. And that way he can continue to compete and have fun with the minimal amount of investment. Uh, that he's comfortable with. And that's the only reason why I do this repair for the local competitor guys is because I know a lot of them don't have a ton of money. You know, they're, this is that's their side hobby, you know. Um, and that's what they do for fun. And uh, I, I, I totally get the, you, everyone needs something they do for fun, uh, for enjoyment. Because, uh, you know, you, everybody's got to work and do all this other stuff and everything. So uh, a little bit of enjoyment in your life sure makes getting up every day to go to work and stuff uh, tolerable. Do I uh, ever use my meter and check for conductivity or resistance of the burnt board? Yes, I do. But whenever it is as bad as this one is, which it means it, it here is good fiberglass and my pick goes down in and I've scraped away and it's still black underneath there. I'm going to assume I, I'm not even going to bother having to worry about measuring productivity, conductivity. I'm going to assume it all is and that it all needs to be replaced. And that's the safe assumption. Uh, Whereas if you're trying to leave some of it and stuff like that, it depends, you know, um, on the power supply side, you, it might be a little more forgiving if you, if you, you know, really cleaned it up good and, and didn't assume all that cut. But after you make power and it go the rail voltage goes way up over here on the output side, you, you can't have a, just a, even a trace of conductivity at all because it'll screw everything up because now you're dealing with high voltages and the higher the voltage the easier it is for, for the electricity to travel through resistive areas and stuff or make jumps between 
uh, things that are, are, are too close. And that's why uh, you'll hear guys that repair stuff that, uh, especially on the output side, well, even on the power supply side, but they'll solder in all the fits and then they go back with their meter. You should always go back and check to make sure you didn't get any solder bridges because solder bridges can blow stuff up. Uh, you know, if you, if, and stuff like that. So, yes, you can use your meter. Uh, we could do it here. That good example. A little learning maybe here. So you would put your meter, and I ain't got the best meter. I just got on sale $20 Craftsman. I would like to get a better fluke. I use nice flukes at work and stuff like that. But uh, you would put your meter probes anywhere it was carbonized up. And you see that? See how you see that every now and then? As I'm dragging it across the carbon. You're going to get little blips depending on where you're going. So right there where I hadn't cleaned it out very good. Oh. And then sometimes you get all the way down through metal. And that so that may just be sitting on a trace part. But it's, it's bad. But yes, you would put your... On the highest uh, ohm and that way you can measure and if you get any kind of reading you know you need to clean it more clean it more uh, or cut that whole section of the board out there's there's guys that are do this for a living and so they've they've got these boards that they've got in and they have quoted it because it was really burnt up or whatever the customer said no way keep it I'm just gonna get a different amp and I don't care and so they've got these old blown boards that they can go in and they can actually cut chunks out of that were good. So say like if I had another one of these that was all blowed up here, but I could get this nice little section, I could dremel this out, put it back in there and then fix all the traces and stuff and, and reconnect those wires with jumpers and then reconformal coat it and replace that section of the board with a known good section. Uh, like I said, I know Jason, he does that for Phoenix Golds, and he's actually made his own custom boards uh, that are designed to go in a certain spot and repair a known bad area of the board. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this bad boy back over. Oh my gosh, look at all that junk. Uh, I just came off all those blown fits. Carefully, well, I've got this balanced on its side. Sweep that off into the floor. Hopefully not on me very much. And then set this down. All right, we got some more back here, but. So some of these fets are just absolutely falling apart. These, these right here have completely done it. I think I can zoom in on that, maybe. Let's see if we can get a little bit of slide here. Can we get that in there? Yeah. So remember that FET that fell apart in our hand and I showed you and stuff? That's right where this burnt up area is. And here's another one. Its center leg is the only one holding it on. And that's that FET. And there's the inside of it. And it's just blowed up. So, when you have FETs blow up, you know, this all looks just terrible. It's all black. Let's let's move these uh, wires out of the way a little bit. And you can see it's all black and stuff in here. It doesn't necessarily mean everything's burnt. Uh, what you need to do is get some Q-tips and some isopropyl rubbing alcohol and just wet your Q-tip. And you can come in here. And you can see I've already done it some because I was trying to peek at the damage when I first looked in this amp. Uh, so I could give the guy a fair warning that this thing maybe toast uh, when we talked on the phone uh, but you can go in and see how much I'm cleaning up off there and see how stuff starts to clean up so some of it is just like the smoke residue from when the when it when, when the fat exploded and burned itself up uh, which you need to clean all of it up because it can be conductive carbon based uh, so it means all you have to clean the board thoroughly. That's another part of the thing you have to charge somebody for. Um, people wonder why bad stuff like this costs a lot. Uh, there's a lot of work to it. You know, you rebuild the board. You have to thoroughly clean every bit of the board. 
uh, to get rid of all that because otherwise the repair won't hold it'll just blow up again and then what was the sense in even doing it you know then everybody just wasted their time and money and nobody wants to waste their time and money especially me I'm I'm too poor to to uh, throw away my hard-earned bucks why I learned to fix things because I really grew up poor uh, and now I do all right uh, I got a good job anyway uh, but fixing stuff has afforded me to keep my things longer wow this thing's filthy uh, and get some things that I would have never bought new because I'd have never spent the money on it too too much of a tight wad Well, has anybody else got any questions here? I'm trying to make sure. Da, 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 that was about six months ago. Interesting. I know the last three or four NS2s I worked on, the screw type bridge connectors were soldered together. Oh, never mind. I don't see DB drive. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, th I think one of the amp repair places is doing that, um, especially if they know it's for a competition person. Um, probably to increase the reliability. They've probably seen problems from it. Maybe not such a big deal uh, on your average Joe if he had a really big one of these just because he wanted to boom real loud, but he wasn't, uh, wasn't, you know, slamming it at maximum. You know, somebody hitting 140, 145 with one of these and not trying to get the max out of it. They just love the fact that it, it has plenty to do and they can play it all day. And it will, you know, if you, if you, if you have a big amp and you don't run it at full power, the thing's going to last forever. Uh, uh, it's just like if you have a too big of a generator and you don't pull all the stuff, it's not going to load that generator down. It's not going to wear the engine out as much, the generator out as much and all that other stuff. Uh, so they may know something more than I do on those connections. Um, I've seen it both ways. Uh, and like I said, they may just do it for the competition guys. So this is cleaning up a little bit. You can see this this rail has even kind of got melty from stuff exploding on it. See how all that soot that soot could be conductive. So take a whole lot of cleaning. And there's other sections and there's oh you guys can't see that. Oh, er, wrong way. And there's this section of the board or the wire. That's why you get these. Uh, that's why I use flat silicone mats, not those work mats that you see. The flat silicone mat allows me just to slightly flex this board up, and then it slips and slides on my work surface, so I can move big things around without putting as much strain on them. Pro tip to get flat flat. Uh, these are silicone baking things for like uh, uh, doing fondue and cakes and cookies and stuff that's why i get the flat one instead of that one with the compartments and stuff you see a lot of the guys do uh, this allows me to use a, my my bench and slide stuff around uh, whereas i don't know if that other mat i think it's designed to not slide uh, so you can see over here this is all just charred we're gonna have to get a replacement piece of wire but you got tons of black over here that board looks pretty toasty so I'm gonna end up having to cut a bunch of fets off but you know the old uh, the old junk is there it becomes easier to clean when all the fets are off but <clears throat> the biggest thing now we got to do we know the power supply side is in terrible spot I did ask around to some of the other repair guys if they had a power supply section uh, that was in good shape that could be rebuilded rebuilt without having to do that kind of stuff just might be worth you know shipping me this chunk and making it easier and i could unsolder this fight this apart and, and then redo it but the big thing is is i want to check the output fits uh so we'll slide that down just a little we can get the meter and check that now i gotta have a little swig of my sodi pop Because all this talking uh, going to wear me out. 
So we want to uh, check the output vets. We know the power supply is basically all blown. I'm going to check a couple places, but man, it just looks like everything's probably popped when it went. It really went. <clears throat> if the output section is not blown uh, for some reason, I doubt it with this as blown as this is, but let's just say for some reason the output section was not blown. That makes it a little more viable to, to put forth some time and effort into this side. However, if this side needs lots of money to fix it, Plus, you got to completely rebuild the output side, all new FETs, new drivers and stuff. Then the cost goes what you know up and up and up, and FETs are not getting any cheaper right now. So that's that's the big, big thing. So let's see if I can make no glare on my multimeter. We're going to turn it to diode continuity. Yeah, that worked. Let's get my lead straightened out here. I can't go on forever on this live stream either. I'd got the garage door shut and my fan turned down and it's still we're still not in the fall yet uh, so it's getting a little warm out here uh, but yeah we will uh, come on meter here we go okay we will go in and we're just going from leg to leg And I've already got a short. So that tells me something in that bank is shorted. So if you watch uh, Todd at Ellenberg, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair, which uh, when this thing becomes a video, uh, I've got a link to, in the description to his channel. He's uh, about roughly 600 subscribers or so. So if you get over there and hit like, subscribe on his stuff and... Uh, Get him going to a thousand subscribers. I got a video I am doing this week because I got a little spare time. Uh, my thousand subscriber special. I'm a little over now and it's long overdue, but uh, mine's kind of fun. I finally figured out what I was doing and everything. Uh, but the reason why a thousand subscribers big to a YouTuber uh, is when you get that plus the minutes, then you get monetization. And while that is not as important to some, some people, some people it is. Todd does amplifier repair for a living, so monetization would help him, uh, you know, earn his living on his own. I got a, a, a job, I, I work standard job like a lot of people. Uh, so that's, I don't do this for a living. So, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, plus it, it unlocks a few things in YouTube, and that's one of the big kickers. That was the big kicker for me was as that uh on actually on live streams i think it allows you to to preemptively uh tell everybody it's going on hey it's strictly amps says what's up damon how much have i missed you have not missed much cliff um cliff is strictly amps about that uh somebody in chat actually wanted to send an amp somewhere besides Ellens ellensburg amplifier repair which i just mentioned jesse c if Jesse C sees this, Strictly Amps, uh, uh, down in uh, Georgia, right? That's Georgia. I, I'm, I hope I'm remembering correctly. Uh, oh yeah, we're we're blowed, blowed between all uh, legs there. Okay, so we can do the Todd's little uh, trick, which is to set it to ohms and. Uh, uh, you can try to figure out uh, which one I think it is when you're checking from gate. Is it this way that you read it? Yeah. So 560, these are the ones that are shorted. 560, we should get one that is uh, way off. I'm not sure how these banks are done. 90, and this should be the last one. Nope. Oh doesn't work on this but we definitely got shorts in the output so this whole thing's blown so uh that's good and bad um it may make the decision simpler for the guy that owns it um since there's so much damage up here uh i'll have to figure what i can do i'm gonna cut a few things away uh and and get the toothbrush on cleaning some of it so i can see it a little better but it is pretty bad 
Um, I'm going to make one more plea to the, some, some of the guys in some of the repair spots to see if anybody has a power supply section for one of these. And if they do, how much would they want for it? Um, you know, the power, the output section would be rebuildable, but I don't know if the guy's going to want to spend the money. You know, once you get up to several hundreds of dollars, uh, he, he can just buy a used one, um, maybe for cheaper, uh, that's still working. Or if we can find another blown one that completely blew the outputs really bad, like this one did the power supply toasty. The reason why power supplies do this, toasty by the way is because when they go dead short if you don't have proper fusing or if you have really big fuses you are now taking the full power of that battery and running it through this circuit board and that's why it melts all this stuff it's because your battery can basically arc weld uh really really high current yes i know it's only 12 volt you know low voltage but it ha it's capable of providing hundreds upon hundreds of amps especially when dead shorted and so it will just burn up these traces and burn up these feds. A uh, little less so normally on the output side because normally when they start popping, some protection circuits will eventually kick in and shut things down. Now, not always. Sometimes when the outputs blow, it's enough to cause a dead short back here, which causes excessive current draw, which then starts a chain reaction and blows up the power supply down here. So let's see if I'm totally zoomed out. Nope. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so... What we have then, let's see if we can move my meter. Sorry, I'm limited on space, so I'm having to juggle things back and forth and make sure. All right, there we go. Now we're centered up and we can slide. Uh, so like I said, we've got a ton of this. I'm going to snip some of this out. Uh, I'll have to count up the stuff and see, uh, see how much it's going to cost. For all the parts, I got a funny feeling he's going to want to look for a used one. Uh, or he may switch amps completely on his build. I don't know. Forsyth, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Ellensburg Amplifier. Yeah, he knows some things better than I do, obviously, because he does it for a living. I'm, uh, I am I state squarely off the bat. You can see... Uh, not a, a guru, <laughs> I'm a goober, uh, and so, you know, I don't claim to know at all about anything. I enjoy electronics, I enjoy fixing stuff, uh, and I just happen to be okay at fixing some amps, and uh, so I've got MacBooks, I've done, uh, and I'm not very good at MacBooks, so I'm going to do a live stream one night, and Hopefully I can get some guys that know more about MacBook Repair to jump in on my stream and help guide me through it. But I'm trying to learn it. I've had, got, had a couple old ones I've fiddled with and, and uh, done a lot of Xboxes or Xbox Ones and PS4s. And I've got several more of them to kind of do. But the ones I got left are all going to need to be revolved. So I got a little machine that might work at that. I'm going to have to learn it. Uh, it's all time. I just need more time if I... Uh, if I had an infinite amount of time, I could learn an infinite amount of things. <laughs> so, so yes, you can uh, to wherever wants to prepare. Uh, check out uh, Ellensburg. He's in Washington, so that's way upper west coast. Uh, there's strictly amps down in Georgia. Uh, there for Fosgate. Uh, stuff like i said there's desert audio there's uh, freeman's there's gns and prepare he does a lot of fosgate stuff he used to work for them he is also the authorized repair for j and l audio's old stuff that they no longer support uh, so if you have old slash series amps that's who they will actually recommend the rossman wiki is a tremendous resource for yeah i've watched tons of Lewis Rossman, uh, let's see, what's the other, uh, what's the young guy, uh, Tim, that uh, started his own business repairing, uh, it's TRCS circuits or something like that, but anyway, he's young, he's like, uh, cool David, thanks for stopping in, man, and uh, like I said, don't worry about that board, it, 
not a big deal. I just hope your punch uh, amp is working good. Uh, I want. I got to do another live stream because we have a punch 150. We were doing that board in that I have got right where the live stream ended. Uh, I set that board aside so that we could pick up right back at it and finish that thing off. And it's still sitting over there. Uh, and I got to do another live stream. So look for another one this week. We might do that this week. Because uh, I got a little spare more time this week. It's supposed to rain closer to the end of the week. So I should have uh, like a, 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 a good chunk of time there. Because I won't be working outside. We're trying to finish uh, a little bit outside stuff. We just got the back. We got the front and both sides down on the house. Everything. We just got the back to finish up. Uh, a little trim painting and stuff like that. Uh, and touch up. So. <clears throat> trying to do that. Tim Herman, yes, that's right, Micromage, uh, TCRS, yeah, he's good, I watch his stuff, uh, of course, uh, Paul Daniels, obviously, uh, I even watch a little bit sometimes of, uh, of, uh, Jessa, uh, doing, uh, yeah, the flex board view, I've got that on my computer, I don't, uh, have his actual version, I got his open version, the free version, and that may change this week when I do my thousand subscribers special. I gotta look and see how much that costs. But part of my getting a thousand subscribers, are you taking some vacation time this week? Sort of. Um, uh, my aunt passed away, so got some time off uh, to, for all that. And so uh, trying to get a couple things done. Uh, in the intern too so double 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 purposing everything in life you know uh, uh so anyway not the best of things but uh, uh anyways moving on uh so yes paul daniel stuff so uh, i'll give you a sneak peek of what i'm doing for my thousand subscriber special late super late because it was like back in march or something like that whenever i got it uh as i plan on i, I only get a tiny tiny bit of money from youtube for advertisements uh, but it is a little bit of money and it should add up to a, a little sum for the year and so I'm going to use that money to reinvest back into uh, the youtubers that I support that have learned uh, that have taught me tons of stuff you know from like you know if they have like patreon or something like that uh, we'll try to do that or uh, maybe I can get in on some of the live streams like with Sam throw him a few dollars and stuff so I plan on reinvesting what I get because I don't need it uh, I don't, I don't try, I'm not trying to do this, like I said, multiple times for a living. Uh, just try to reinvest it at the guys that provided awesome content for me, my mate Vince, stuff like that, uh, which is really awesome. But go to, if, if you're seeing this and you have not checked out Ellensburg Amplifier Repair, there will be a link in the description when this thing is published uh, to his channel. Go subscribe so he can hit his numbers and stuff. He does do amp repair for a living. And uh, by getting the 1,000 subscribers, like I said, one of the, mo the more important thing to me was that unlocked some features in YouTube that allowed you to do live streams better, to do some other things. Also allows you to make uh, posts about stuff that are coming up because if you don't have, uh, if you're not in that special group of over 1,000 subscribers and a certain amount of watch time, you don't get to make any uh, public post that says, hey, I got a video live stream coming tomorrow or anything like that. So it unlocks a couple extra features that, that you don't have when you're first starting out in YouTube. And a long time ago, they, they didn't have those restrictions. Anybody could do just about anything. All the features were available, and then YouTube changed all that. And so he's going to hit 1,000 subscribers in record time uh, compared to me. It took me, I've been doing this, what, two, three years? Three years, maybe? Uh, but he'll, he'll, he'll way outstrip me. But like I said, he... He's really good, does it for a living. Uh, me, I do it for fun and for the local guys. Cool, David. I appreciate that, man. Does anyone know how to start buying from Zen? I can't get in touch with them. Uh, OG, uh, I, I would say <clears throat> uh, you you probably need to already be slightly established because they're one, they're one of the big ones that like services the big companies db sundown that kind of stuff uh so you need to get one of their smaller subsidiary setups uh 
So Team Pie is one. Uh, so Scott from Power Hog, uh, he teamed up with Team Pie, and he the, the thing I like about Scott, totally brutally honest, he's like, hey, you know, we teamed up with Team Pie. We gave them the specs we wanted. They helped us pick out all our stuff, and they built the amp to the specifications we chose. And so that's where you're... Uh, Cool. Yeah. Oh, gee, do that. Um, and I, I seen you just posted a video uh, here the other day. I can't remember what it was on, uh, and it, but it's in my on my list of, of videos. I well, I said earlier in the live stream. I when I go to bed, I have everybody I'm subscribed to and stuff. Uh, uh, I'll try to watch their videos and stuff and give them views and and watch time and stuff especially small guys that's really important like ellensburg uh <laughs> todd over there um so anyways I'm, I'm starting to get late and i'm getting tired i'm gonna have to end this soon uh yeah team pie uh uh like i said scott from power hog he, he, that's who he used, and he was upfront and open and honest to everybody about it, though. You know, he says, <laughs> that's what I like about the way he's doing his business, is he's totally upfront, and he says, yeah, we're using these people. We specified it, then we brought it in, we tested it, and checked it all out. He's not trying to hide anything from anybody or say he's some kind of awesome manufacturer or special or nothing like that. He's just wanting to put out good product and have fun with it, and he had, he, that, he, he, like I said before earlier, having fun, you know, doing the stuff you enjoy and, and, and having a good time at it. That's the, uh, the important stuff. So, yeah, uh, I would give them consideration. I don't know how much they require you to buy. Uh, I don't know how fast their ship times are and stuff like that. If you do custom stuff, if you don't do their their uh, already prefabricated things, because I know it took Scott quite some time to get all his stuff. Uh, but I think he specified certain things that he was wanting in his amps uh, uh, that he didn't want, you know, maybe the cookie cutter ones that they might have. So that'll all depend. But I know uh, uh, it's Candace or, or something. I can't remember what she goes on. She's You'll see her in some of the, the groups every now and then. Uh, yeah, Scott is a really cool dude. He, uh, he, uh, I was doing a live stream. He was on there. That's how I met him as he was on one night and I was fixing a Rockford, uh, power 300, uh, one of the old power T three hundreds or something like that. Uh, I, I've still got one. Actually the one I fixed, he, we chatted afterwards and everything. And I ended up sending mine to him because he had another one at the time he was going to use his, he was trying to make a build with several of them. And, uh, so he took the best parts out of both and built a real nice one. He took my board and I think his his outside because his outside was in really good shape because I just fixed the board on the live stream and uh, uh, put it all together and made it all nice to use it. And then he sent me all back all the other stuff so I could fix it up later. Uh, and it's still up in my uh, 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 to-do pile. But uh, he got that. And then later on, uh, oh, Derek uh, Willison, uh, Big D Wiz, uh, needed one of those amps to he'd got a mint one like still in the box so he didn't want to dyno it real hard but that amp happens to be a sweet spot where it was actually way oversized for the rated power but they needed one to fill a niche power size so it does <coughs> sorry i'm gonna have to have a drink it does way more power than what it's uh rated and so In North Georgia, I bet Scott's probably somewhat close to Strictly Amps, too. But uh, anyway, he ended up selling that amp that was my amp uh, or giving it to or sending it to. I don't know all the details to Big D Wiz. Uh, and that's the one that he actually dynoed. He had he kept his original one that was all nice and minty. He didn't dyno it and he dynoed the other. And so since he had that second one. Uh, he really, really drove it hard to prove that it would do crazy numbers, and it did. Uh, you got to go check out Big D Wiz's video on that because uh, it's really cool. 
So I look forward to fixing the one I got, and then hopefully somebody will want it. Uh, I don't have a plan for it, uh, but hopefully somebody will use it. I may end up using it in some other vehicle to run some subs because it does put out a crazy amount of power. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, most underrated amp video. Exactly. So I got to get finished working on. I got some other the more modern power series. I got a T400-4 and a T1500 or T400.4 uh, and a T1500-4. Uh, BD, uh, BD1 CP, a CP one I got to finish fixing, uh, the mono amp. So the more modern ones, that's for uh, my other videos that I'm trying to work on, which is Project Midlife Crisis, uh, which is me and my wife's little toy that we've got going there. So look forward to those coming out uh, when I get to it. Uh, hopefully this week I'll, I'll be able to dedicate a little time, but I'm trying to get the, the I, I've said it in videos long ago and stuff I, I get more shop work done in the winter because uh, it's cold outside nobody wants to be doing anything you're not mowing the lawn all that other stuff so trying to get all the stuff that should have been all done this summer and i've kind of not got it all done this summer you know because we're kind of into fall now <laughs> uh, trying to get it finished up so that uh, before winter so that we can say that that's all done <sighs> So yeah, uh, you might even ask Scott, uh, he might be able to uh, give you details before the team pie gets a hold of you, um, not sure, uh, or <laughs> might be able to tell you what not to get that slows down the order if you're wanting to get a thing or tell you at least what the minimums are, or if you're just looking for something fun, I mean, if you want your own amp line, that's one thing, but if you're just looking to get a couple of them that you can get custom done, uh, always thought it'd be fun to get one of those couple of the smaller thousand watt amps, uh, but get them with the blank heat sink, uh, so that you could just take it apart and take it to a shop and have them in engra custom engrave something for you. So it'd be like your own amp. Uh, and I wouldn't care what guts were in it at all, really, honestly, but actually it'd be kind of fun to find one that would fit some old Rockford stuff and, and make a custom soup. To, I got a punch 75 that I really won't ever be able to do much with because it's missing some junk that I could, would love to get a different heat sink for and then soup it all up and make it the most powerful punch 75 HD you've ever seen. Uh, but that'll be for the future. Maybe we'll do that then. So, Uh, but anyway, I'm going to have to calculate the cost on what all these fets are going to cost because most of them's blowed. Just snip a few out. I do need to get in here with my, with my, uh, eye loop and look for vibration damage to confirm if this one's got it bad or, or not. Um, the other one may have been a, his oldest amp or something. I don't know. Um, he didn't like label them with when he got them and stuff, uh, which if you buy used amps and stuff like that, or if you've had them rebuilt, stick some tape on the bottom of it and write that information just so that if something goes wrong, you know which is your oldest, which one may have been used, which one was rebuilt, when, stuff like that. So you can keep a little bit of track because if you're in SBL competition, you are causing vibration damage to your amps. Uh, uh, it, you're causing vibration damage to your car <laughs> uh, so so it's going to happen so if you can during the winter send it off and just say hey i want somebody to suck all the solder out of all the fets and reflow new solder in you know every couple of years before it gets bad before it cracks and before you have to worry about the legs uh getting fatigued and stuff uh, plus on these new ramps they were originally done with lead free solder uh, when they, when you, if you suck all the solder out and put in new solder, it's going to be leaded solder, uh, which is more malleable. And so it does better in the vibration. Yeah. Big D did a video on that. So, um, uh, Perry Babin, which did, a d does the, uh, amp repair, uh, tutorials. And then, uh, on the, uh, do it yourself audio pages, 
uh, provides assistance for amp repair. Uh, modified a punch 45 and beefed it up, and I actually have a bunch of the stuff to do that to an old punch 45. But I sold a couple of mine. I'm kind of selling a bunch of my old Rockford stuff uh, as I get it fixed here. Since I got everything I needed for our one project car, and I've got that Type RF in my truck and some stuff, I'm kind of ending up with a whole bunch of surplus uh, amps that are doubled up and tripled up. And so I'm uh, trying to thin out a few amps to make more room on my shelves because my, my garage is a wreck with amplifiers. Uh, and I want more room. It's, it's a wreck with amplifiers, PlayStations, and uh, Xboxes. And then I'm trying to make a little room so I can have a little area for more for MacBooks. Uh, just because those are the things that are best supported uh, on YouTube and, and Facebook groups for repair. Uh I got a couple old AM radios I got to work on, and that's really fun. Uh, I never did a video on the one I did, the 64 Plymouth radio. Had to teach myself Super Heterodyne uh, AM and build my own circuit tracer and stuff and everything. That was awesome. I need to make a video out of what I got left of it. Uh, some of the video clip footage was on the hard drive that crapped the bed. I lost a lot of stuff. Uh, a whole bunch of wire harness building stuff and... Oh, I can't remember what all was on there. I thought of something the other night. was like, hey, I should have a video for this. And it was because it was on that hard drive. And I couldn't even get it to recover with Linux. Uh, and I'm not willing to spend the money to send it off to some hard drive. Or Rossman. I don't even know if he's doing hard drives anymore. But it's not worth it to me. Um, you know, I can always eventually remake those videos. Because uh, they were just in crappy, crazy logics format. <laughs> you know, they weren't high quality awesome you know making you know something i'm trying to make a living off of so oh, there's my oldest so he's come out but uh has anybody got any other questions i'm gonna call it a night my voice is starting to get worse uh, as far as long as i can go we've already been going for an hour and a half so stream there we go so i appreciate everybody coming and watching and we will do the rockford this week uh i will i will put that on my list and i will get another live stream going and we'll finish that rockford it was a punch 75 hd i think uh because like i said i paused it right where it was when we finished that one stream so you could watch the first stream uh and then we're gonna pick up right where that is as a matter of fact i'll probably go back and watch the ending to see what we kind of chatted about the very end uh so we can pick that up uh brandlin Dan, Dan Essie, thanks for the stream thank you for coming and watching and uh like i said this is what happens when vibration damage sometimes uh, other things this is this is where bad things happen i know bear vids has showed some really burnt up stuff uh i may see about trying to unsolder this and hopefully maybe somebody's got a section here, but I get some of this cut back. But it really charred up this area and this area over here um, much more than I like to repair. Some guys are really good at it, and they one I know one guy, Kevin, or I can't remember who it was, has actually built this uh, driver section that goes in here that uh, uh, drives all the FETs. So the, 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 the pulse width modulation chips here, it goes through this part of the circuitry and then there's a whole bunch of this repeated for each each one of these. So this this set is for these and then there's another one here that run these and then there's another one here that runs these way out here that you can't see my hand. Uh, and he has remade that section of the board so you can cut it out because that section of the board, when the, when the power supply fails catastrophically, a lot of times that will burn. And Sam Bearvids uh, has shown in some of his live stream piecing back together parts of that and stuff and having transistors floating in the air basically as he wires it all up and then he'll fill it back in with some epoxy or something later. But just to get the power supplies going. So we'll see. This one may become parts. Uh, this section back here would be rebuildable, obviously. Uh, but this section up here is going to take maybe a little more than we want to do. Uh, might become a part amp. So we'll see. Once I get it all stripped off here, it might be a little easier to clean with the toothbrush, like I said. 
and really get in there and spray it with the isopropyl alcohol. Always 91% or higher. Uh, 99 is best, obviously. Uh, but if you go any lower, there's too much water in it, and you're getting water contamination all over your board that you don't want. Uh, too much moisture. All right, everybody. Let's call it quits. Uh, that way I can save my voice a little bit, and it'll recover. I won't get a horse. Uh, and we'll do that Rockford Falls Gate this week. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, hope you learned a little bit of something or saw something cool. Leave a comment. Ask questions. I have been absolutely terrible about uh, replying to comments here lately. And that is actually already on my list Is uh, in doing my 1,000 subscriber video is to get caught up on comments and stuff. So life's just been really busy. And, and YouTube content comments have been low on the priority list. But... Uh, it does list them out for you, all the ones that you have not replied to. So I, I have that list, which is nice. Helps a procrastinator like me. Uh, so at least I know they're still there and I can go back through and try to comment on them and, and reply to them. So I thank you all again and uh, have a good night.